from you all my sins, O oh God. I thank you for changing my life where I'm not a junk anymore, lost, that I have a privilege to go to heaven one day. You rescue me from the lake of fire, O oh God. All because of the blood. All because you humble yourself and became human to die for us and then brought the cross. Thank you for that. All of us here could be in hell right now. But he chose to leave the glory of heaven to die for us. Thank you. Dale gracias a Dios. Dale gracias. Dale gracias. Dale gracias. Never lose your gratitude of what God has done for you. In spite of all you go through, discouragement, your failures, disappointments in life, it doesn't matter. Because the Bible said that God is a sovereign God. He's in control of everything. That's why we thank Him this morning. A great God. A loving God. A merciful God. A God that loves us. Thank Him. Thank Him from your heart. Thank you, Jesus. I don't hear no one thanking Him. He needs to hear from you. Thank you. Te damos gracias porque nos perdonaste nuestros pecados. Thank you, Jesus, for my salvation, for your mercy, for the many chances you have given us. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the love, your unconditional love, O oh God. Gracias te damos, Señor. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, have your way this morning, God. Release the anointing, Father, your power. Refresh us this morning, Father, with your presence, your anointing, Father, this breaks the yoke, whatever yoke there is among us, destroy it, O oh God, with the power of your Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. He's here. Embrace His presence this morning. He's here. His presence is here. Embrace His presence by faith. Take this opportunity. Allow Him to touch you. Right now. With a fresh touch. Fresh oil. Release it, Father. Pour it from above. Release the anointing from within, O oh God. Release the anointing from within. Sing to Him. With your own heart. He's here. Embrace him. Holy Ghost. Touch 
touch, oh God. Touch the broken hearts that are here. Bring healing to the broken hearted. Meet their needs, Holy Spirit of God. Praise Him for your name. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. You're worshiping the living God this morning. Lift your voices. Lift your voices to God. Holy, 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 holy. Jesus, we sing praises to your name, O God. Come on, lift your hands in reverence to the God of heaven and sing with all your heart. Praise you for your name, O God. Shiva Mashi Lama Haya Lama Shi. Worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, God is here. Receive your blessing from God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thought about you, God. No one else. Thought about you, God. Thought about you, Jesus. Let your anointing flow, Father. Let your anointing flow this morning, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you all the honor and all the glory. All the honor and all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. You can sit down. Amen. See, we need to learn as Christians that when the Holy Spirit is here, that you don't you don't limit him. We worship the living God, and that's not a God that is made out of stone. Amen? If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to minister in this teaching in a sermon that God gave me when I was reading a book, a Christian book. Amen? And it's called The Importance of Guarding Your Heart. Amen? I'm doing a series on the second coming, the rapture and so forth. As I was reading a chapter, it was, there was one paragraph God gave me this morning. Amen. And uh, it's, the text is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Amen. Proverbs 4, verse 23. The importance of guarding your heart. Amen. And the Bible reads like this. And I think I'm reading from the New International Version, okay? The one that Paul used. Let's see. The Bible says, Above all else, guard your heart, 
for everything. Someone say everything. everything. You do flows from it. Let me read again. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Let's pray together. Father, this morning we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We pray for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. I sprinkle your blood upon us this morning, Father, that you cleanse us, that you sanctify us, Father. Bring revelation of this word as you gave it to me, to your church. Anoint me, Holy Spirit. Speak through me, Father. Anoint my words, Father. Bless your word this morning as we give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen. Once again, I like to repeat myself because I'm preaching to the final show here again in Richmond. Amen. Amen. And after the fifth time, Jack and Junior, they get it. The, the Mexicans, I don't know about the black people, the Mexicans, after the sixth, seventh time, oh, they get it. Amen. Amen. The Pancho Villa generation. Amen. I'm not talking about the, uh, the Mau Mau generation. I'm talking about the Pancho Villa generation. Amen. The importance of guarding your heart. Because everything you do, now as a Christian, right, flows from it. Amen. And, and pay attention because this is something that if you don't hear the whole message, you're going to lose the main message that God gave to me for you. Amen. And this is the revelation that God gave me. You, you need to go back first uh, to heaven. Let me just lay a, a foundation here. In heaven, the Bible said that Lucifer came up or he influenced one third of the angels. Are you with me? There's in lesson one of you somewhere, right? Uh, in my lesson. And because of that, because of their rebellion, right, and pride, he was cast out of heaven. Amen? And he landed on earth. That's what the Bible says in Revelation. He landed on earth. Earth was his. Are you with me? And But you need to understand this. Pay attention to this. Because of, of his rebellion, Amen. And, 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 and wanted to overthrow God's throne. Him, it was one third of the angels who were condemned to the lake of fire. There, there's no out for them. There's no parole. There's no nothing. They, they're going to burn forever. Are you with me now? Okay. And this is why, don't lose that thought in your mind. This is why the Bible warns us that we must guard our heart because we do, that everything that we do flows from it. Everything in your Christian walk. I'm not talking about the sinners, I'm talking about the Christians. And the devil is going to try with all he's got to infiltrate your heart by using his deceptive tricks, lies, schemes, traps, whatever. He'll use people. He'll come in by throwing stuff to your mind, through your eyes, amen, or what you listen to, amen, who you hang around with. But the devil has been doing this for years, thousands of years, in infiltrating hearts. Go ahead, lower the piano down a little bit. And, uh, and he's got many, many, in, in the Bible, he has infiltrated many hearts in the Bible, amen, in order to use those people to bring destruction in the lives of people. Amen? And the reason that the devil does this is because, number one, he wants to destroy your relationship with God. Amen? He wants to destroy that relationship with your spouse and your family, your loved ones, with leadership, within the church, among the body of believers. Amen? Because the devil knows because the first sin was up there in heaven. He committed it. Amen? The devil knows that sin separates you from God because he was kicked out of heaven. And he's doomed. There's no way out for him. Are you with me so far? The Bible says, and I gave you scripture, in Isaiah 59, verse 2, but your iniquities have separated you from God. 
your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. The devil knows that, and we do too as Christians. The sin separates you from God. That's why be, before we came to Jesus, we were in bad shape. Why? Because we were separated from God. Amen? Why was I a heroin addict for nine years? I almost died. I had two overdoses. I, I, I got shot with a 38 caliber in my chest. I almost bled to death. I almost died and out there in the world and many other things because I was separated from God. Until one day they told me about Jesus Christ that he set me free. Amen? But if I sin as a Christian and pray with sin, I'm going to be separated from God. I don't want that. I, the, the devil almost killed me out there. You think I'm going to give him a chance? Heck no. Then why are you? Or why do many Christians play with sin? Amen? Someone said, I think I'm, go, I'm going to Buddy Love Church. This pastor is preaching against sin again. Be my guest. When you go to hell, say hello to Michael Jackson. Amen? Listen, in Revelation 20, Verse 14 and 15. It says, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. It's real. Amen? The lake of fire is the second death. And listen to this. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. That anyone is any man or woman that rejects Christ as Savior. Amen? In Matthew 25, verse 41, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire. Here it is, listen. Prepare for the devil and his angels. You see, God didn't make hell for humans and you know, for Satan and his angels. But the devil knows that if he can get you to sin and die in sin, you're going to wind up with him in the lake of fire. That's why God says what? Guard your heart. Amen? Guard your heart. In Revelation 20, verse 10, this is the prophecy of Satan. This is his future. In the Bible, I'm sorry, in the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's his future. That Satan's future. And the fallen angels that follow him. And every person that rejects Jesus as Savior. Amen. There's a place called hell. Amen. It's like a holding tank. Amen. Like here, they say that the Papist has been sentenced to death row. But he's in the county jail. What is he waiting for? For him to be what? Transfer where? To prison, to death row, amen. But he's he's still in jail. But th that doesn't mean he's not going to go to death row, amen. Many people that died, I'm talking about rejectors of God, without Jesus, they, they find themselves in what's called hell, the place of torment. They're waiting there, into the great white throne judgment of God. That's in the future. Amen. For God's going to judge him. And then after the judgment, God's going to tell him why. He's going to throw him into the lake of fire because they rejected Jesus. Amen. And guess who's going to be there? Satan also. Amen. But we, we ain't go there. We're going to go to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we sing to the to almighty God. Amen. Praise is to the living God. Right? Thank you, Jesus, that he died for us. But listen. Throughout the years, the devil has injected his poison in many hearts for the main reason of using those people 
Amen. That he has injected the poison. He uses those people that are poisoned, men or women. Amen. To do his job in trying to sidetrack you and me from following Jesus. Make sense? And uh, his main goal is to destroy the Jews, but also us Christians now, because we are on our way to heaven. Amen. And let me give an example. In the days of Noah, God had a man of God by the name of Noah, anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching salvation to all that generation. I was studying on that, doing research. Millions, millions in the days of Noah, of that generation, millions upon millions, because it was global, worldwide, were destroyed. They were destroyed. And they find themselves today in the place of torment, waiting for judgment day. But how did he do it? Well, he had his soldiers. He had people, mockers of God, rejectors of God, telling them, no, it's crazy, he's lying. God is a God of love. God ain't going to see you to hell. God ain't going to destroy the world with the great flood. And the devil was successful. Because those people, they heard the gospel through Noah. And, amen. And the Bible said that he preached for 120 years. They rejected God. Because they heard another voice from other people. I'm pretty sure that the devil had his false prophets there. Prosperity preachers. Amen. And they were preaching, Noah's a liar. God is God of love. Don't believe Noah. And what happened? We know the story. They all died in the flood. Sodom and Gomorrah, the same way. They didn't believe the word of God. But someone influenced them that God was not going to do it. How can God kill us? How can a God of love kill us? Boom. Fire comes from heaven. They became ashes. And then all them faggots became ashes. All them lesbians became ashes. And they find themselves in, in the place of torment, according to Scripture in First Peter. Somebody, Satan used someone or people to influence them. All right? God's not going to do it. And they didn't guard their heart. And they got conned by the devil. Make sense what I'm saying here? I'm giving you manna from heaven. This is not day old bread. Amen? So Satan influences those corrupt hearts and uses them as instruments to destroy everyone that follows God. Born again Christians. Amen? So here's my, my question for this morning. What lessons can we learn from the tactics that Satan used in the, in the Bible? In the Old Testament, I'm going to give you one example in the New Testament so that we can learn from him. Hey, man, that's the devil, bro. So he won't trick you. Amen? See, I'm a drill sergeant. Then I'm training you how to fight the devil. We expose him. Amen? Number one. Example number one. Let's talk about the fall of Adam and Eve. And please pay attention. You see, ever since the devil was cast out of heaven, he had a deep hatred towards God, Lucifer, who became Satan, amen, the dragon, the destroyer, amen, the father of lies, etc. A deep hatred of God. And he even got more hatred when God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden on earth. And then God gave, gives them dominion over the whole world, according to Scripture. The devil said, hey, that was my world. You don't believe me? The Bible says that God cast Satan from heaven to the earth. The earth was his. But God gave it to Adam and Eve. And God says in Genesis 128 and God blessed them and God said unto them 
be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion <coughs> excuse me over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth the devil heard that he he he, he saw what happened and he got more angry at god but listen carefully you're going to miss this one if you don't god told him be fruitful and multiply in other words god was going to raise what the human race through whom adam and eve they're going to be perfect no sickness nothing no evil when lucifer saw that he began to scheme well here's here's the real scheme i'm going to expose him can i expose him the devil said because of what i did in heaven i'm done in all those billions of fallen angels we don't know how many are the one third right and he knows what happened in heaven to him he said if i can get adam and eve to sin because he knows that sin will separate you from god what you happened to him if i can do that then i can destroy this verse be fruitful and multiply i can destroy mankind the whole human race Adam and Eve didn't guard their hearts because they disobey God. That's why it's important, where's Pappy? When you give an order to obey what's given to you. As Christians, we need to obey the word of God through the leadership, godly leadership. When they give the instruction, don't do that. Separate from him, separate from her. Obey what God is saying because God speaking to the man of God. Or through your husband, through headship. And God gave him a commandment from the tree in the middle don't eat on the paraphrase in it. And the devil knew the principle of what happened in heaven. We are out there. The importance of guarding your heart. Hello? And that we know that Satan came in. The devil came in. And he got her to disobey the word of God and sin came in. She got Adam and sin and they were separated from God. And the devil was mocking and laughing at God. Look what I did. And the devil was thinking, okay, God, destroy him. Kill him. You cast me from heaven. I'm headed to hell, to the lake of fire. You lost your people, God. Are you out there? But to the devil's dismay, God had everything planned out. God promised redemption to the fallen couple, husband and wife, and told the devil through her seed, because what you did is going to come a savior. It's going to crush your head and defeat you and bring man back to me. Are you with me? Go on and praise him. Amen. Listen to what it says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. God speaking. This is after God clothed them. God had to kill two innocent lambs, which was a prophecy of the coming Messiah Jesus someone had to take their place for sin those two little lambs I'm almost speaking they were there out there you know eating their grass come here oh where are you going to take us so, eat ice cream <laughs> oh, they cut off their necks and shed the blood your necks oh my god they had to shed blood they were the substitute for Adam and Eve and God forgave them and they were restored back to him in fellowship but the only problem they had now is sinful nature. Hello? 
Now listen, in Genesis 3.15, God speaking, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. In other words, throughout the generation, amen, is going to be born a Messiah, our Savior. And the devil, the devil knew what was going on in that, in that prophecy. And when he's born and does what he needs to do, he's going to defeat you, crush your head, amen, and, and render you powerless. And I'm going to give the world back to mankind. Because every time a person is born again, we're more than conquerors through him. Amen. Are you with me? Now, here's the deal. If Adam and Eve had just only guarded their hearts and not listened to the voice and lies of the devil, this world would not be as it is today. Full of death, Amen. Violence, sickness, destruction, wars, and chaos. Hello? The disobedience to the word of God caused Adam and Eve's downfall. And that was Satan's goal, listen, to destroy the whole world, the whole human race. But God came through Jesus Christ when he paid the price on the cross to redeem the whole world back to him. Amen. And that's why God is telling you, you need to what? Guard your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart, the devil can use you to bring destruction on others. Are you with me? But thank God for Jesus. Amen. That he died on the cross to pay for the penalty of sin and to redeem us. The heart of the gospel verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his, own, his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The obedience, listen carefully, to the word of God will guard your heart from all of Satan's attacks or schemes. Just obey. Don't try to figure it out when you go into something and God says, just obey, but, but no buts about it, just obey. We need to learn to obey the word of God. Because every time we disobey, what happens? We come crashing down. Amen? You're trying to figure it out, but no, no, Pastor, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. God knows everything. You're telling God, God, you don't understand. Man, if I was there when you were making it, you weren't there. You need to trust God. Amen? You, I still have your attention. What lessons can we learn? Where from Adam and Eve, you need to learn obedience. Learn to trust God. Even if it looks good, don't do it. The devil shows you something, don't eat it. But you don't understand. <laughs> they laugh because they got to deal with that. He said, God, you, you don't understand. I'm lonely. <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> God said, don't touch it. Don't eat from it. Don't eat from it. Because the moment you eat from it, the devil penetrates your heart. That's it. If you get out of there, it's going to be hard. 
Adam and Eve ate, and look what happened to this world. Sickness, death, murder, rape, abortion, homosexuals, lesbians, perverts, all because of that disobedience. To the word of God. And you see out there, the devil entered, listen, uh, let me say it again. The devil entered the heart, right? They didn't guard the heart, and it ruined all mankind. All mankind. Through two people. This is my life! No, 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 it's not your life. It's my body. Keep it. <laughs> Just kidding. But you don't want kind of right? No, it's not your. It's not your life. It's not. Your, it belongs to God. Because every decision you make, especially in your marriage, is going to affect the future. It's going to affect your grandkids, your great grandkids. It's going to affect your great 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 grandkids. Because you didn't guard your heart. What example can we learn from Adam and Eve? That. All because of disobedience to the word of God. Satan came in and did what he did. What lesson can we learn? I'm glad you asked. Number two. The angry heart of Esau. The angry heart of Esau. Now, don't, don't forget the picture that I gave you in the, in the beginning. The devil hates God so much with a passion. Amen? He can't strike at God. Amen? God promised the Messiah. Amen? In Genesis. Right? And the devil knew the Messiah was going to come. Amen? Through... Uh, when God gave the promise to Abraham, if you read the scriptures, through Isaac, and, 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 and Isaac birthed two kids, who were they? Esau and Jacob. And the devil knew the prophecy that a Messiah was going to come to the lineage. So he's trying to figure out how am I going to stop it? The devil's thinking if I can stop the Messiah from being born, that I'm a scot free. I, I, I won't go to the lake of fire. Hello? Listen carefully. The angry heart of Esau. Any angry people here? You angry at someone? You angry at your husband? You angry at your wife? You angry at your dad? Your mom? A friend? You angry at the pastor? Who? Do you think put that anger in you? Satan. The devil. But he did it for a reason. He's got to go with that anger in you. He got a plan that he's going to use with that anger. And that's why if that's you, you need to repent right now. If you're angry at someone and he's here, before we go home today, you need to ask that person to forgive you. Ask for forgiveness. If not, Satan will use that to destroy whatever God has for you. Point number two. And I remind you, times of your generation. The angry heart of Esau. Why was he angry? Why was this man, the son of Isaac, with whom was he angry? With Jacob, his brother, his own brother. Family. See, the devil is going back somehow behind the scenes, influence him, and got him to sell his birthright to Jacob. And then when he snapped, he wanted it back. That was too late because after the fact, the blessing of the firstborn was given to Jacob. And he says, Jacob stole my birthright. No, you sold it, fool. He forgot that Satan blinded him. Carnality 
a person, a Christian that's walking in a coronation will make foolish decisions. And when God used the father to bless Jacob, he was angry because he wanted his first blessing of the firstborn. He wanted it back. It was too late. He sold it. And full, full, full of anger. But who is behind it? Come on back. Who is behind it? Satan used that to fill him with anger. With a passion. Satan's anger. The same anger that Satan has against God. Now Esau had it. Against his brother. Make sense? For what purpose? Because Satan wanted to use Esau to kill because the prophecy he understood that out of Jacob were going to be born sons. And those twelve sons became the nation where the Messiah was going to be born. Can you see it? Are you with me, Saints? I hate interruptions like this. Uh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You think die or what? Where was I before I was rudely interrupted? I'm no, just kidding. Where was I, man? You see, the devil was going to use Esau to kill whom? Jacob. Because he sins the out of his seed from Jacob's seed. His twelve, his, his twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel were born there. Okay, his son became what? Israel. For the Messiah was going to what? Be birthed. That was his goal. Why are you angry? Well, my great grandfather was a man full of anger, and my great great no baloney came from the devil, not your great grandfather. Amen. Anger produces murder. Listen carefully. Why do people kill people? Pepe was put in prison for killing three people. What was it? It's anger. It was anger. Amen? That's why you need to ask God to forgive you your anger. If you're angry at someone, you need to take care of business. Because Satan can use that to bring destruction. You need to forgive. See, the devil will try to penetrate your heart, especially if you're cardinal, you're prayerless, for the purpose of bringing destruction on others, on your life, in your marriage, in whatever path you're going through, you're going to be in destruction. Because the devil had a plan, and that's why he filled your heart with anger. Amen? Esau. Was full of anger. In Genesis 27, verse 41, you hear me out. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. Amen. The blessing of the firstborn. He lost it. He sold it. He was angry. No one's fault by himself because he opened the door. Of his heart to the devil. And now he's full of anger. And my question this morning for you why are you angry at a certain person? And be honest with yourself and don't point fingers. Hello? Esau said to himself, he was thinking, he was then is planning. The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill 
my brother Jacob. Who injected that poison in his heart to kill his own brother? It was the devil. What was the main reason? To stop the prophecy of Jacob. One day having what? Twelve sons. See, the devil can sense the anointing in your life. The devil can sense the blessing that God wants to give everyone that is here. The devil senses the ones that are called to ministry. Amen. And the ones that are being trained in ministry, he's going to do everything he can to stop it, to destroy your calling, to destroy whatever God has for you. And maybe God or the devil can use a person with anger to do it to you. It might be a loved one. Like Esau, the brother of Jacob, someone close to you. See, it's quiet this morning. See, the devil was behind everything when he filled the heart of Esau to sell his birthright. Because in reality, the devil wanted to kill Jacob. And the devil, according to the scripture we just read, in Genesis 27, verse 41, he's the one that ignited that burning fire of murder of, of, of for him to kill his brother. Amen? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You got a grudge or grudges against your brother or your sister. There's resentment because you think someone done you wrong. Or well, they did. Unforgiven spirit. You don't want to forgive. You say you forgave, but when you see that person, you get angry. It means you didn't forgive. It's a telltale sign. Amen? Because when there's forgiveness, you see the person, you see him now as your brother. It's love. But every time you see that person, you still want to kill him. Or it makes you uneasy because you have really not forgiven that person. Well, guard your heart. So the devil cannot use you as one of the vessels for destruction as it did with Esau. Amen. If you read scripture, God prevented that. It never happened. Amen. God somehow did something and there was peace. Amen. God protected Jacob. So the devil saw, man, it didn't work. Hello? It didn't work. But I want to tell you something about the devil. Just because he, you, you had the victory, he ain't going to stop. He's, he's going to go to plan B. You need to understand that, that Satan, not to give him credit, he's a fighter. He doesn't give up. He's persistent, persistent, persistent. That's why you need to, you need to be a man of God that's locking with God, obedient to the word of God. In your prayer closet, you can continue, amen, to fight the devil on a daily basis so God can give you the victory. Hello? Throughout the years, Moses, what do you think Pharaoh Kill all the babies. They throw all the babies of the Jews, the Jewish women. They throw them in the, into the now to drown them. One survived, Moses. Because God protected him. Because through Moses, God was going to save the Jewish nation. And the devil said, man, I missed this one. And then it happened. All the demons of hell went, all of them, 
The one third went to Satan's chamber, yelling and screaming. Guess what happened? What, what happened? That there was what happened. It's be, have you heard that the Messiah has been born? Don't clap yet. And the devil was in race. So he somehow infiltrated the, the evil heart of Herod and killed all the babies. He's going to stop the Messiah from fulfilling his what? His destiny. And God say, hey, Joseph. Not you, Joseph. Not you, Joseph. The Joseph's in the Bible. <laughs> hey, Joseph, you and your wife, get out of here. Go to a certain place because the baby's life is in danger. And God protected baby Jesus. And then there he was, crucified on the cross. Say, I didn't get him as a baby, but now I got him here. He's, he's there dying on the cross. He influenced the hearts of the Pharisees, of all the religious people of those days, all the pastors, they didn't guard their hearts. He injected poison. And they hated him. Because he wasn't like Buddy Love. He was a man that preached the gospel, a savior. And they hated him. And the devil got all those guys in his, and used them to pull him on the cross. And he's there laughing. I got him. Hey, God, I got you. I got your son. That's it. But what the devil didn't know. That after he died, and after he was placed in the tomb, on the third day, he was raised from the dead, and there he was crushed by the power of God. And God had the victory, and Satan was defeated forever and forever. But let me go back. I ain't done yet. You need to understand that the same devil that came with Adam and Eve, the same devil that came with Esau, the same devil that wanted, that if you study the Bible, you're going to see how you, he, he wanted to penetrate. With, and he did with people that did not guard their hearts. Are you with me? He went to Jesus in trying to penetrate his heart. In the temptations. Amen. When Jesus, almost done, was at the end of his 40 day fast in the wilderness. The devil already had his plan. He had three temptations set up. Amen. And those three temptations that Satan had, listen carefully, you need to understand that there was a fallen angel. He's not stupid like many of us. Amen. The Bible says he's full of wisdom, but he uses the wisdom for evil. And he had a plan. And those three temptations that he shows to trap Jesus in trying to get him to sin. Because if Jesus would have sinned, he would not be qualified to die as our Savior. He tried to infiltrate the heart. But guess what? Jesus, our great example, guarded his heart. What about you? Why is you stumbling as a Christian? Because you don't guard your heart. You open it. You think you can get away with, with sin. You, you think you can play with sin and the devil is not going to do nothing to you. You're wrong, bro. The devil will destroy you if you keep it up. Amen? But Jesus uses a weapon to destroy and defeat Satan. And the same weapon he, our Savior, has given it to us. And that weapon is the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God. The Word of God is so powerful. Amen? That it can change a heroin addict. Amen. The word of God is so powerful that it can heal cancer. The word of God is so powerful that it can defeat Satan. If you obey it and put it to practice. Hello? And Jesus defeated 
Satan with the power of the word of God. Amen. In Luke, follow me carefully, just listen to me. Chapter 4, just mark it down. Luke 4, verse 1. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of then he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written. He's using the word. By him using the word, he's what? Guarding his heart. Amen. Adam and Eve, if they would have used the word of God, God said, No, we're not going to eat from that tree. They guard their heart. Sin would have never entered. But they disobeyed, and sin came in. Are you with me? Every time you obey the word of God, the devil can penetrate. The devil cannot penetrate when you practice the word of God because the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. Amen? But what do we do? Well, answer in your heart. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone. In other words, I'm not going to fall to your trap. I'm not going to disobey the word of God. I'm not going to use God for my personal tennis wants. Hello? You see, Satan will also try to tempt you with all his tricks and his back in order to penetrate your heart to get you to sin. Amen. The devil tells you, God understands that you're tired and you wore out and you're having big, big problems at work. You're mentally exalted. Just drink one. God understands. Just drink one. Make those stones into bread. Just smoke one more crack. One more time. Just fix one more shot of heroin. God understands. It will calm you down. Just drink a six-pack to calm your nerves down. Make those stones into bread. It is written, God is a holy God. God is not to be mocked. It is written, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We belong to God. We have been bought with a price. Amen. The Holy Spirit lives in us. I'm not going to dirty the temple with alcohol, with drugs, or whatever you have to offer. Amen. Be gone, Satan. You can rebuke him also. Amen. The devil, listen, this is almost done. Give me like one more hour. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm still on the first one because understand that the devil is not stupid. Amen. The Bible says he had fasted for 40 days, right? He was hungry. He was hungry. Amen? So the devil went after his what? As a human, his weakness. He was hungry. Amen? And the same devil is going to go after you in your weakness. Because he's not dumb. What is your weakness? Women? Ah, I got your attention on that one, right? What is your weakness? Pretty boys? You won't look at an ugly guy. Ugh, you got a pretty boy? You go all the pretty boys. Yeah, well, that's your weakness. That's your weakness. And the, and the bad thing about it, you're ugly yourself. I don't think he's going to look at you. Dude, that's fair. Your, your middle name is, I won't say it. <laughs> I won't say it. Amen? And you, you're hungry. Some of you are hungry for love. Some of you are hungry for companionship. You're lonely. Amen. You're weak in that area. You're lonely. You're, you're, you're a single man. You're a single woman. You're lonely. You're singing, I'm just a lonely boy. I'm just a lonely girl. 
Amen. You're lonely. You go to the Lonely Boys concerts all the time. Amen. And, and the devil, because he knows your weakness and you're hungry to meet that loneliness, he'll set you up with El Chulo. Ooh, I'm serious, man. Or La Chula. But El Chulo is demon possessed. El Chulo, man, he's got VD, and AD, and CDD, and all kinds of Ds. Amen. And La Chula, forget her, man. She's been with the Dallas Cowboys team, with the New York Jets team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, and everybody, man. Holy Ghost. And the devil wants to use that person to destroy you. So the devil anoints that person to go after you. And you can't see it. And God is telling you this morning, you better guard your heart. You better guard your heart. Because Satan is going to use that person to destroy you. Satan is going to use that man, that woman to destroy your calling. Your ministry, or you go and do your thing, and then all of a sudden you go to the doctor. The doctor says, You know what? You got HIV. <gasps> Shula. <gasps> Shula. Shula, the one that gave you the HIV. Shula, the one that gave you the everything. You know what? But you didn't guard your heart. God's trying to stop you and you still after it. Jesus told the devil, it is written. And rebuked him. He guarded his heart. And that's what God is telling you. To the separated husband or wife, you're separated. You're married, but you're separated. Here comes Shulu number two. For the man that separated, he comes Shula. But Shula is not a Shula, it's a Shula Bula. You know, homosexual. Well, no, they dress like women. You were in for a big surprise, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I better get out of this one. Amen. So you, you're separated. You know where you're going. You're, 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 you're still young and all those hormones are. <laughs> you know. They're raging. You know why? Because you don't guard your heart. Because you're not praying like you're supposed to. That's why you're all cardinal and fleshy. And you're, every time you speak, you foam in from the mouth. And the devil's going to sin in Chulo. But pastor, he's just my friend, but the devil anointed him to, to knock you down. But pastor, she's just my friend. We were just having Bible study in our bedroom. <laughs> you lying devil. Pretty soon you're going to end up committing adultery. Pretty soon you're going to end up committing fornication. And the, and the devil got you because you didn't guard your heart. Because the devil used that man, the, the woman or the woman that he injected, that person was lust and perversion, then it's and he got you and sweet talk you and man. The most vulnerable people in the world, amen, are women or men that are separated from their spouses. They're vulnerable. And the devil will send someone to just meet your needs. A person that oh, they're going to understand you. They're going to, oh, yeah, going to agree with you. Amen. And then you're going to fall into adultery, into fornication. You didn't guard your heart. You got quiet on that one. Here's another one. Then I conclude. I'm going to hear everyone today. All them verse. There's one more left. Oh, this guy, here it comes. Amen. Well, there's two left, really. To the married couples who are having problems in their marriage. They're together. 
but they hate one another. There's no more love. There's no more love. There's no more love. No, there's no respect to one another. And then the husband, he hates to go home. The wife, he don't want him there. All of one day, he comes cable man. And cable man, man, he looks all decked out. He's got a beard, 6'5", broad shoulders. Pretty boy. And she invites him, and she's wearing tight shorts. And the guy begins to eye her out, and she, she begins to scope him, uh, to see him also, scope him out. And he does all the cable, and then he, he's real nice to her in the understanding, and that's the kind of guy I want. My husband's always yelling at me. My, and all that, your husband's bad. And by the way, little sister, here's my phone number if you need more cable. <laughs> and she gets it. And one day the husband said, she, she, the husband and her have it out, and he said, I'm going to mama. He's a mama's boy. And, and his mama lives in, man, out of state. I'll, I'll be back in three weeks. The first day he leaves, ring, and he's the cable boy. I got a problem with my TV. I'll be right there, ma'am. But it wasn't your TV that was a problem. It was you. You didn't guard your heart full of lust, and you commit adultery. And God sees that and said, that's not what I wanted. God wanted to restore your marriage. God wanted to heal your marriage because marriage is serious. The same with the husband. He's over there at work and there's the secretary. She smells nice, perfume. She's pretty with all the butterflies on her eyelashes and she got long fingernails and lipstick, and she smells nice. When you go home, your wife smells like Lysol, and <laughs> she doesn't comb her hair. She doesn't take a shower. She's Raggedy Ann. You look at her, you have no desire for your wife. You can't wait to go to work. Now you're wearing cologne. Now you're dressing up very nice. And then as you comb your hair, now you brush your teeth. <laughs> now you shine your shoes and all decked out. You can't wait to see the secretary. And she knows you're having problems in marriage. And she's, she's done it before. She's a home wrecker. And she gets you. And you fall into adultery. And God says, that's not what I wanted, son. I wanted for you to guard your heart because I was going to restore your marriage. And the devil used whoever to destroy the marriage, to destroy the children, to destroy the grandkids, to restore, destroy everything that was ahead to one person. The devil penetrated the husband, the devil penetrated the wife, and destroy everything. Make sense? Samson got you. Delilah got you. For what? Only for a little thrill for 15 minutes? Because after he got what he wanted, he cut you loose. He changed his number. After he left, he went to an, another woman that had cable problems. How stupid you are. And after he left her, he went to another one that had cable problems. That's how stupid you are. Guard your heart. My conclusion, where are my musicians? When the devil comes at you, and this is for me too. This is for everyone. I'm human, but I guard my heart, bro. Guard yours. Listen. When the devil comes at you in whatever lie or schemes or deceit or temptations, you need to guard your heart. 
you need to guard your heart. It's not worth it. Your salvation, your life, your anointing, your calling, your marriage. Don't let Satan destroy your marriage. Don't let the devil destroy what God wants for you in the ministry. Well, the ones that God has called into the ministry. In Proverbs, once again, 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Stand this morning. We're going to worship Jesus. But as we worship Jesus, worship him. Because I want the Holy Spirit this morning to come and bless you and touch you. If there's anger in you, there's whatever, lust, whatever in you, disobedience, you need to lay down. You need to lay down. Don't let Satan trick you. Every hand lifted to heaven. We're going to sing the same song, the worship song. But sing it with all your heart. Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> 